Hello and welcome back to the Immortal News family. In today's heartfelt video, we bring to you the latest updates on the passing of some truly remarkable individuals within the last 24 hours. We also have an update regarding renowned supermodel Bella Hadid. As a part of the Immortal News family, we are committed to honoring and remembering those who have made a lasting impact in our lives in the world. If this video touches your heart, or if the stories of these extraordinary people have moved you, please show your respect and remembrance by giving this video a thumbs up. Thank you for joining us in this moment of reflection and tribute. Number 10. Rico Wade, a pivotal figure in the music industry and a member of Organized Noise, passed away unexpectedly at the age of 52 on April 13, 2024. He helped shape the sound of Southern hip-hop with his trailblazing work with OutKast and as a co-founder of the Dungeon Family Collective. His talents went beyond production. He helped establish the careers of several big performers, including Future, Janelle Monae, and Killer Mike. His impact was seen on numerous chart-topping tunes, including TLC's Waterfalls and tracks from OutKast's critically praised album At Lions. His creative vision helped shape the distinct sound that characterized an era and impacted other artists around the world. Rico Wade's passing has saddened the music community, who will remember him not just for his musical genius, but also for his mentorship and friendship. His impact may be seen in the music of the artists he influenced, as well as the distinct sound he helped to create. In reflecting on his impact, Killer Mike expressed his tremendous grief and thanks for Wade's guidance and friendship attributing him with significantly shaping his life and career. Tributes to Rico Wade. Number 9. Quinton Conway, the innovative spirit behind Hit Factory KC and husband to popular YouTuber Lori Conway, passed away at the age of 47. Known for his vibrant presence and entrepreneurial spirit, Quinton left a significant mark on the Kansas City music scene. His studio, Hit Factory KC, became a beacon for local talent, fostering a community of musicians and artists who found their voice under his guidance. Quinton's legacy extends beyond the walls of his studio. His passion for music and his commitment to the arts community enriched the lives of many aspiring artists. He was not just a studio owner, but a mentor, collaborator, and friend to those who had the privilege to work alongside him. His impact on the music industry in Kansas City will be felt for years to come, as many of his protégés continue to carry forward the lessons they learned from him. Beyond his professional achievements, Quinton was a beloved figure known for his kindness and generosity. His death is a significant loss to both the community he built and his family. Tributes to Quentin Conway. Number 8. Gabe Petillo, a beloved voice actor and member of Toby Mac's Diverse City, passed away at the age of 52. Surrounded by his family, he left a legacy full of creativity, passion, and faith. Born into a musical family, his mother, GMA President Jackie Petillo, exposed him to the world of gospel music from a young age. His career was defined by his spectacular contributions to the Christian and gospel music industries, both as a singer and behind the scenes as a choreographer and producer. His artistic talent and vibrant attitude were undeniable from his days as a youth performer with DC Talk to his pivotal part in Diverse City. His expertise went beyond performing. He co-produced tours for Grammy and GMA Dove award-winning musician Toby Mac, bringing both creativity and charisma to the stage. His profound faith and love for his faith were integral to his life and work, often reflected in his infectious joy and generosity. He is survived by his wife Jenny, their three daughters Amara, Milo, and Remy, as well as his brother Marcel and mother Jackie. While the music industry and his family mourn his death, his legacy of faith, creativity, and love continues to inspire. Tributes to Gabe Petillo.
Number 7. Faith Ringgold, a visionary American artist and a profound cultural influence, passed away on April 13th at the age of 93. Born on October 8, 1930 in Harlem, New York, she grew up in a supportive atmosphere that valued creativity and was steeped in the richness of the Harlem Renaissance. Throughout her life, she was a distinguished painter, mixed-media sculptor, performance artist, and passionate activist, best known for her bright narrative quilts that elegantly weave together the nuances of race and gender. Her artistic career was defined by her pioneering use of fabric for storytelling, particularly in her iconic patchwork paintings. Her work frequently tackled social themes, mixing the personal and political in a way that was both approachable and academically rigorous. She was a leader in the use of art as a tool for social change, informing her work with experiences from the civil rights and women's movements. Among her numerous contributions to the art industry and culture, her American People series and the French collection are among the most well-known forcing viewers to reassess American history through a racial and feminist lens. Her influence stretched beyond the art world, as she was a beloved teacher and novelist who touched many people's lives with her commitment to justice and equality. As we reflect on her extraordinary career, we remember Faith Ringgold as a formidable artist and compassionate human being whose works gave voice to the often unheard. Tributes to Faith Ringgold. Number 6. Joe Aitken, the most celebrated Bothy ballad singer of all time, passed away at the age of 79. A native of Kirimuir, Joe's voice resonated through the halls of Scottish folk music, leaving a memorable mark on the genre. Known for his robust performances and mastery of Bothy ballads, a traditional Scottish folk style, Joe's legacy is unparalleled. He was a seven-time winner of the Bothy Ballads Champion of Champions, a feat unmatched in the event's 41-year history. Joe's signature tunes, Muck and O'Geordie's Buyer, and Bogie's Bonnie Bell, were more than just songs. They were stories woven into the fabric of Scottish culture, cherished by a Moray fan base that spanned generations. His music was a staple at gatherings, evoking the spirit and toil of the Scottish countryside. Despite his diagnosis of prostate cancer in August 2022, Joe spent his final year doing what he loved most, traveling to festivals, performing with vigor, and receiving the adoration of fans who revered him not only for his talent but for his enduring spirit. His final performances were testament to a life richly lived and passionately dedicated to the preservation and celebration of Scottish folk traditions. As we remember Joe Aitken, we recall not just the music, but the man who brought joy, authenticity and a deep love for his roots to every note he sang. Tributes to Joe Aitken Number 5. David Louis Goodstein, an influential American physicist and educator, passed away at the age of 85. From 1988 to 2007, he served as vice provost at the California Institute of Technology. He was also a well-known professor of physics and applied physics, holding the Frank J. Gillun Distinguished Teaching and Service Professor title since 1995. Born in Brooklyn on April 5, 1939, he had an impressive academic career, graduating from Brooklyn College and getting a Ph.D. from the University of Washington. He wrote several important physics texts, including States of Matter, and co-authored Feynman's Lost Lecture. He was best known for directing and hosting The Mechanical Universe, an award-winning instructional television series that had a global impact on educational broadcasting. In his later years, he dedicated himself to tackling societal issues via the prism of science, with a particular emphasis on scientific ethics and the challenges posed by fossil fuel dependence. His book, Out of Gas, The End of the Age of Oil, addressed similar worries, combining his scientific expertise with a strong interest in environmental issues. His contributions to science education and advocacy for a sustainable future, which earned him numerous prizes, including the Ersted Medal and the John P. McGovern Medal, left a lasting legacy. He is survived by a community of scholars, students, and the general public who were inspired by his work. Tributes to David Lewis Goodstein.
Number 4. Victor Riley, former standout offensive tackle and NFL player, passed away at the age of 49. An Auburn University alumnus, he made his mark in college football before being selected in the first round of the 1998 NFL Draft by the Kansas City Chiefs. Noted by Sports Illustrated as the number seven offensive tackle available that year, he showcased his skills over four seasons with the Chiefs. He continued his professional career with the New Orleans Saints for three seasons and later joined the Houston Texans in 2005. Throughout his career, he was admired for his formidable presence on the field and his dedication to the sport. His passing is felt deeply across the NFL community and by fans who remember his significant contributions to the teams he played for. His legacy as a player who consistently demonstrated strength and reliability will be long remembered in the annals of professional football. As we reflect on his life and career, our thoughts are with his family, friends, and former teammates during this difficult time. Tributes to Victor Riley. Number 3. Martin J. Weigand, who passed away at the age of 84 on April 11th, was an American businessman renowned for his influential roles in healthcare and thoroughbred horse racing. A New York University graduate, Weigand began his career on Wall Street before venturing into the technology and healthcare industries. He founded Medco Containment Services, building it into the largest mail-order pharmacy in the U.S. before its sale to Merck and Company in 1993 for over $6 billion. Wygod also served as chairman of WebMD, significantly impacting healthcare information services. His passion for thoroughbred racing began in his youth, spending time as a hot walker at Belmont Park and Aqueduct Racetrack. His professional entry into horse racing was marked by a gift of two racehorses from his friend Fletcher Jones. Over the decades, Wygod, together with his wife Pamela, became significant figures in the racing community owning multiple award-winning horses in River Edge Farm in California. Their contributions to the sport were profound, with their farm being named the leading breeder in California multiple times. Aside from his professional achievements, his philanthropic efforts, particularly through the Rose Foundation and the WebMD Health Foundation, demonstrated his commitment to community and health. His legacy in both the corporate and racing world shows a life of passion, innovation, and generosity. Tributes to Martin J. Wygod. Number 2. Lorenzo Palomo, a distinguished Spanish composer and conductor, passed away on April 13, at the age of 86. Born on March 10, 1938, in Ciudad Real, he spent his formative years in Cordoba, where his passion for music took root. He honed his skills at the Cordoba Conservatory before advancing to the prestigious Barcelona Superior Conservatory of Music, where he studied under Joaquin Zamacois and Sofia Puche de Mendlovitz. His career was marked by his tenure as the chief conductor of the Valencia Symphony Orchestra from 1973 to 1976, and later as a conductor and pianist at the Deutsche Oper Berlin from 1981 until 2004. Living in Berlin for 38 years, he enriched the city's musical scene with his innovative compositions and vibrant performances. Known for his melodic compositions that beautifully intertwined classical Spanish elements with contemporary symphonic music, his works were celebrated internationally. His dedication to music not only enriched his audiences but also served as a bridge between Spanish musical heritage and modern orchestral expression. His legacy lives on through his contributions to music, both as a creator and as a performer, touching the lives of many with his passion and creativity. Tributes to Lorenzo Palomo. Today's top headlines. News 1. Eric Braden, renowned for his role on The Young and the Restless, Updates fans on his health, revealing his cancer remains at bay. At 83, Braden shares his gratitude for modern cancer treatments that have significantly advanced, aiding his positive prognosis. My cancer diagnosis right now is on hold, he declared, expressing thanks to his medical team. 
he emphasizes the importance of regular health screenings, advocating for preventive measures like cystoscopies and colonoscopies. Braden, who disclosed his cancer battle in 2023, continues to inspire by stressing proactive health management and resilience in the face of illness. News 2. Isabella Strahan, daughter of Good Morning America anchor Michael Strahan, shared joyful news in her latest YouTube update. Her chemotherapy journey will end sooner than expected. Diagnosed with medulloblastoma last October, Isabella's fight against this common pediatric brain tumor has been both public and poignant. Originally slated for six rounds of chemo, she joyously revealed a reduction to just four, allowing her to reclaim her summer. I'm so happy, Isabella expressed through tears, overwhelmed by the prospect of regaining normalcy. Her resilience and positivity shine as she looks forward to more milestones ahead, including physical therapy and ongoing support from family and fans alike. News 3. Bella Hadid, long battling Lyme disease, shared a joyful update. She's finally healthy. The model celebrated by returning to her passion, horseback riding. At Wellington International in Florida, Bella, now 27, reveled in her recovery by engaging with horses, her beloved hobby. Sharing this milestone on Instagram, she posted images riding and bonding with the animals, expressing her deep affection for them. I love these animals, she captioned, highlighting the therapeutic joy they bring. Bella's return to riding is not just a personal triumph, but an inspiring message of resilience and recovery to her followers and fellow Lyme disease sufferers. News 4. Emmy-winning director Ron Weiner, renowned for his work on the influential talk show Donahue, has passed away at the age of 93. With a distinguished career spanning over two decades at WGN Chicago, Weiner made significant contributions to television broadcasting. A Chicago native and a Navy veteran, Weiner's career in TV began in 1956 at WGN-TV, where he rose from a prop man to a staff director. His directing prowess earned him three daytime Emmys out of seven nominations for his exceptional work on Donahue. Weiner's dedication to the arts extended beyond his professional career as he actively engaged in teaching and contributed to various arts organizations. News 5. Lori and George Chappell, the world-renowned conjoined twins celebrated for living lives rich with individuality and courage, have passed away at the age of 62. Holding the title of the oldest living conjoined twins as recognized by Guinness World Records, their journey ended on April 7th at the Hospital of the University of Pennsylvania. Their story of resilience and uniqueness, marked by distinct careers, interests, and relationships, has left an unfading mark on all who followed their public and personal lives. Lori and George faced medical and physical challenges from the start, being conjoined at the skull and sharing critical anatomy, yet they pursued separate and fulfilling lives. Lori, a passionate bowler, and George, a country music artist, never let their physical connection hinder their aspirations or spirits. Their remarkable story of independence and dignity including graduating from high school and taking college classes, has inspired many around the world. As the community mourns their loss, the legacy of the Chappelle twins remains a powerful testament to the strength of the human spirit and the beauty of living life on one's own terms. Number one, Frank Albert Olson, an influential American executive known for his leadership at Hertz and RCA Corporation, passed away at the age of 91. Born on July 19, 1932, in San Francisco, California, he started his work as a night manager at San Francisco International Airport at the age of 18. He continued his education at the City College of San Francisco, where he prepared for a career that would take him to enormous corporate heights. During the 1980s, he became chairman of Hertz, leading the company through a period of significant expansion and innovation. He also served as executive vice president of RCA Corporation, solidifying his reputation as a strong force in American business. His strategic vision and leadership made an everlasting mark on the businesses he led and the industries they served. Tributes to Frank Albert Olson, 